Happy Sunday, Equipping Center family. It's me, your girl Jazz, just coming to you to say great morning and welcome you, in, you to online service this morning. Here at the Equipping Center, we develop character, we discover our purpose, and we deploy it into our, our assignment. So you're at the right place at the right time this morning. I want you to take a moment for me and do me a favor and, and invite five people to church this morning. And all you have to do is tag their names in the comments. Your friends, your family members, those that you know that can use a word this morning because God definitely has a word for us this morning. So I just want to encourage you to do that. Like, share, comment, and invite five friends. This is an opportunity for you to witness to someone, for you to use your evangelistic gift and invite somebody to church this morning. So right there from your living rooms, your bedrooms, your cars, wherever you are right now, you can invite someone to church. So invite them to church. The, um, the Word of God says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is a liberty. And right now, the Lord is here. He's here with us. He's omnipresent. So he's with you. He's with me. He's everywhere. So that's the God that we serve. So I just want to... Thank you for tuning in this morning. Stay tuned. Make sure you're here. God has something great for us this morning. And I just want to take a moment to remind you that next week is Father's Day. Woo, woo. We want to honor our fathers. Make sure you honor your fathers, your pastors, your leaders, the, the men in your life that, um, that paved the way, the leaders in your life. And so we just want to do that. They try to say that Father's Day is under-celebrated. Well, we're we going to step up our game this year. We're going to celebrate in a big way. So just make sure you celebrate those in your life. Amen. And we want to also honor the man of God of this house, the father of this house, Pastor Hasker Hudgens. So make sure that um, you um, get an opportunity to do that. Amen. And so stay tuned for worship. I know you're going to enjoy it. So get ready for the presence of the Lord.
Yes, you are. Yeah.
It's more than I can stay. I melt in your peace. It's overwhelming. Wow, what a beautiful worship. I could just stay there for a moment. I'm glad that you are here with us this morning. We have another opportunity to worship, and that's what I've given this morning. Um, the, the Word of God tells us in Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is there, your heart will also be. God is not interested in your money. He doesn't need your money. He wants to know where your heart is. Is your heart with him? Will you do what he asks you to do? So this morning, I just want to encourage you to do what God asks us to do and bring our, our tithe into the storehouse and, and bring our offering. And so... Um, we have the opportunity to worship God with our money. And so um, I'm excited about that. I know there's been times in my life where I was like, man, I was trying to decide between tithing and paying a bill. And I learned through my journey in life that I can't afford not to tithe. And so, and I learned that God provided everything that I needed in that leap of faith. So I just want to, I just want to encourage those, even if you're struggling with that this morning, trust God, try God and watch and see what he'll do for you. I want to um, tell you to uh, direct your attention towards the screens. We have three ways that you can give this morning. So um, we're going to put that up for you. Amen. Well, bless the Lord. Let's praise his name. You know, right where you are in your bed, in your living room, in your kitchen, in your car, wherever you are this morning, let's just take a moment and praise the Lord. It is so great to be with you another Sunday morning. And it wasn't it great to have uh, Kalia with us. Uh, I'm telling her she's part of this family and uh, we'll continue to invite her over to be with us, to bring us and lead us into worship. Amen. Uh, I want to ask you, I want to ask you to continue to uh, pray for this church. Continue to pray for myself, Deanna, uh, the leadership, those that are making decisions as we continue to chart the course and seek God about uh, where we are going to be, where we're going to be located. And so please don't just say I'm praying, but do pray for us. Amen. We need the wisdom of God as we make uh, some tough decisions. But I also want to encourage you to meet us here uh, every Sunday morning, um, 10 a.m., Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Well, are you ready to get some word? I am ready to jump into the word uh, this morning. Amen. Uh, the title of uh, the message this morning is, is Worth, W-O-R-T-H. You know, I just came up with that title just now, Worth. There's a song that, that I love to hear, and many of you do too as well. Uh, you thought I was worth saving. You thought I was worth saving. Let's talk about that this morning. How many of you, of you that are watching this morning know that you know that you know that you are saved? You know, we have different terminologies for that word, saved. Uh, born again. Are uh, you hearing me? A citizen in the kingdom of God. Are you born again? Are you a citizen of the kingdom of God? And so that's kind of where we want to focus this morning. I have some scriptures to read uh, this morning, and I hope you will read along with me. If you have your Bibles uh, ready, let's get ready to jump into the first verse of scripture, which is John chapter 3. John chapter 3. You know, um, I often... I often think about this subject, uh, subject of worth. Am I, that he thought that I was worth saving. I'll never forget, I'll never forget my experience of salvation. I hope you haven't as well. How many of you remember your experience of salvation? How many of you remember where you were when you gave your life to Christ? 
Um, another way we used to say it, I surrendered. How many remember when you surrendered your life to Christ uh, in the Lord? How many remember that day, that night, that morning? Where, where were you? What did you feel like? I remember, I remember leaving out of the church that Sunday morning. And when I walked outdoors, everything was different. The sky, the sky, all of a sudden the sky was different. The air, the air smelled fresh. Every, everything was different for me that morning, the morning that I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I'll never forget, you know what? Uh, and you should not uh, forget as well. I think about this subject uh, sometime when a person transition from this life to the next. You know, the, the, the thing that comforts a family the most is to know that their loved one is with the Lord. It's to know that their loved one is saved, born again in heaven. You know, when you know that grandma or papa made it in, that, that just brings comfort. And then what would normally be a funeral, it turns into a celebration. Did I say go to John chapter 3? I'm sure I did. Verse 1, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Verse 3, it says, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 4, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb? Let me say this to you right here. Um, for the non-believer, uh, for the non-believer, when he or she dies, they, uh, that person experiences two deaths. For the believer, when that person dies, that person experiences one death. Explain that to us, Pastor. See, for the believer, uh, you're already one with God. You're already one spirit with the Lord. And so when you leave this world, you enter into eternal life with God. For the non-believer, when you die, uh, you experience two deaths. You experience the physical death, and then you experience a death where God says, depart from me, I know you not. And so this morning, I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping to encourage you uh, to make, uh, make sure that you are ready when your time comes. Let me ask that question. If you were to leave this world today, where would you spend eternity? If you were to leave this world today, would heaven be your home? You know, I ask that question because many Christians, they question their salvation. Many Christians, they question, am I really saved? Am I really born again? You see, being born again is not about feeling. It's not about goosebumps going up your arm. Um, it's, it's something that you know, that you know, that you know when you are born again. Let's go to verse number five. It says, Jesus answered and said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is, is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh. I know a lot of quite a few good people in the world. I mean, some of the most kindest people I know in the world are people that do not go to church, people that uh, do not necessarily believe in God. But they, they, try to, they try to enter into the narrow gates by doing good works. They try to enter into the narrow gates by just being friendly and kind. And, and you know, I wonder, why is it so hard to just, to just receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Why, why is it so hard to just surrender? You know, you go through your whole life doing good things, you know. 
you give the shirt off of your back to, to a stranger, you your feed the hungry, you clothe the naked, uh, you take in strangers, um, you're always doing good things. You are a kind person, but you don't know God. That which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. See, when you are born again, when you are, when you are saved, you know, I was having a conversation with a, a gentleman one time, and he asked me the question. He said, he said what is saved? He said, what, what do you mean by saved? What, what is saved? We're go- I'm glad you asked. We're going to get to that this morning. What is saved? What did God actually save you from? What did he save you for? Those are questions that we have to ask ourselves. What, I know what he saved me from and what he saved me for. You know, my life um, is changed. And I'm sure those of, you that are, those of you that are living for the Lord, your life is changed as well since you believed. Can you say that? Since you believed. Verse, verse 5, am I, I went, no, with verse uh, we're, we're finishing with that one. Verse 6. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. We're going to start with verse 8. You know, the verses that I'm about to read to you now, I, I even taught this, this, these verses to my children when they were babies, when they were little children. And I'm glad I said that. Your children, let's, let's train them up in the way that they should go. You know, a lot of, a lot of parents, we, we think we're being our children's friend by not, by not, I guess some people say, I don't want to force God on them. You know, God, God has trusted you and I, those of us that are parents, to train our children up in the way that they should go. You, you cannot force a lifestyle on a person. This is a lifestyle. This is what you are to be. This is how you're going to live. This is, this is what will lead you and guide you and will direct you and order your steps uh, in life. Uh, teach your children while they are babies so that they will, they will have the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit throughout life. Romans chapter 10, it says, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is where you want to be. You want to be where the word is in your heart. You want to be where the word is in your mouth, as well as your children. He says, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There's that word, you will be saved saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yes, I remember, I remember taking those steps to the altar and kneeling down on my knees and and confessing with my mouth the Lord Jesus. Believing that he died. Believing that three days later God raised him from the dead. I believe that. And guess what? 33 years later, I still believe that. You know, in a couple of months, I would have have been serving uh, the Lord 34 years, 34 years. I remember, I remember when uh, I first gave my life uh, to the Lord. I first, when I first came to Christ, uh, and this, you know, I'm I'm talking the way that uh, we grew up, but I I remember talking to a gentleman who had been born again, who had been living for the Lord for two years, and I thought that was amazing. I had only been living for the Lord like two months, and I, I thought two years was a long time. But I got to tell you, I, I pray and hope to be able to say one day, I've been serving the Lord 50 years or longer. Amen. John chapter 10, get this right here, verse 9. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Jesus Christ is the door. There is no other way into the kingdom except through him. 
There is no other way into heaven except through Jesus Christ. You know, many people are, are, are trying out all type of things, all type of religions, all different types of beliefs, uh, trying to enter into the door, to the narrow gates. I, I got to tell you, Jesus Christ, he is that door. He is the only way, the only way. So, so there's no getting around that. Are oh, you hearing me this morning? Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22. Um, Isaiah says, look to me and be saved, for I am God and there is no other. We keep hearing that word saved. Look to me and you shall be saved, for I am God and there is no other. I got, I'll tell you one thing. Let me go ahead and shut this. I'm not even going to get to that. I'll tell you one thing that God has saved us from or he desires to save us from. He desires to save us from a burning hell, a burning hell. I want you to try something. Run your water as hot as you can run it. And then I'm, I'm talking about your bath water or whatever. And then put your hand in it or set in it. And then imagine you couldn't you could not even set in it for, for, for five seconds. But then imagine that been turned up a thousand times, 10,000 times. That is probably what hell is going to be like. And, and it's going to be that way eternally. I mean, forever. Amen. You see, God never sends anyone to hell. Yeah, I know we say, man, you know, there's some people in hell. There's a lot of people. In hell. God never sent one of them to hell. How do a person end up in hell, a burning, a burning fire, a burning furnace? How does a person end up in hell? By rejecting God, by rejecting this one that he sent here on earth, Jesus Christ. That is how a person ends up in hell. By not accepting, then you deny. When you do not accept God, when you do not accept his son, Jesus, then you deny him. And when you deny him, you do not enter the door. Are you hearing me? Let's keep going. Psalm chapter 18, verse 3, he, he says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. See, I, I, love, I love that right there because, because being saved is not, just, it's not just going to heaven. See, I have salvation here on earth, have salvation every day of my life. He'll save you from your enemies. Oh, if you don't believe that you have enemies, uh, let me tell you, you have enemies. He will save you. There are people that want to harm you. There are people that want to, that want to destroy you. There are people that, that want to come against you. He'll save you from your enemies. You will never even know. He, he said, even I'll make your enemies your footstool. He'll, he'll make your enemies even to be at peace with you. Yeah, <laughs> That, that's a God that I serve. Psalms chapter 34, verse 6. Uh, this poor man cried out, uh, cried out, and the Lord heard him. Someone needs to hear that. God has heard your, your cries. He has, he has, God has seen your tears. It says the poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him. And here we go. And saved him out of his troubles. God will save you from troubles. That's the God we serve. He will save you from your enemies. He will save you from your troubles. Psalms 107.13. Uh, we're, we're reading the word tonight. It's, it's in the word. Say it's in the word. It's, it's in the word. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distress. Their distress is. See, God will save you from yourself. God will save you from your worries, from your anxieties. He will save you from yourself. You, you know, just think about it. Uh, Sometimes we'll go through things and we don't know, we don't see no way, no way out. We don't, we don't know how we're going to have victory. 
Uh, we think the world is, is, is caving in on us. You know, sometimes we, we think it's over. We think the worst things that we can think only to get on the other side of the wall, the other side of the door and say, how did I get over? How did God bring me through that situation? That's the God that you serve, the God that we serve, that all, all hell could break loose. Everything seems to be coming against you and you don't see no way, no way out. Only to look back six months later and say, how did God get me through that situation? Um, yeah, you're thinking about a situation right now, maybe two or three moments in your life that you don't know how you came through, how you got over, how you, but you know that only God brought you through, brought, brought you through, amen? And, and that's what I, that is one of the things that I love about the Lord. The Lord will let you know that he is God and there is no other, amen? I could really just stay on that subject right there because I have had so many, so many times in my life where, man, I I couldn't see a way to I couldn't see a way to pay this bill. I I couldn't see a way to to um, man to heal myself or to heal a loved one. That I, I could just think of things and only to only to get through it and look back and say, man, God saved me from my my worries. He saved me from my troubles. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14. It says, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. You know, if you just believe, he says, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For you are my praise. Can you say that, God? You are my praise. I will praise you. <laughs> Listen, somebody's about to get a shout on right now. You are my praise. If you just believe, if, if you just believe that you're healed, you know, belief goes a long ways. If you believe that you're healed, if you, if you believe that you're saved, guess what? So shall it be. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Are you following me this morning? Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. It says, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. You know, that is, that is very important that you and I, that we endure to, to the end. You know, many of us, many of the people, I can think about so many people that started this journey when I started this journey. I can think about so many people, just even over the last year, uh, that has that is quit serving the Lord, you know. He, he says, he who endures to the end shall be saved. Think about it, you know. Uh, you're in a race, and, and you're running this race. You're running this race, and there is a finish line. And the race is not completed until you cross the finish line. Let me, let me say this right here. Uh, living for the Lord, is an, it's, it's an easy race. It's, it's, it doesn't get any easier. There's persecution. Yes, there are hard times. There are troubles. But the Lord will deliver you through them all. I'd rather, I'd rather go through some things with the Lord on my side, knowing that the Lord will deliver me through them all, than to go through things, go through hell without the Lord. He'll save me. He'll save you as well. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. Here we go again. It says, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Shall be what? Shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end, end will come. Let, let, let me ask you another question. When God saved you, did you tell anyone? Did you tell your story? That is what a witness is. A person that will witness what God has, that will be a witness to what God has done for them. 
will be a witness to the change that happened in your life when Jesus Christ came into your life. I, I remember, you know, I, I think about it sometimes just how, I want to say foolish I was. I, best way of saying it, I didn't know much. I, I just simply would do what the Word of God said to me to do. And I remember giving my life to Christ. I remember inviting Jesus Christ in. And I remember thinking, then I'm, I, have to, I have to tell everyone what God has done for me. You see, God has done some great things for you as well. Have you, have you shared with others what God has done for you? I, I, I was like that song, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, that kind of tell me your age. The Williams brothers, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can do what? Who can save anybody. You know, I've met people that, says, that, that have said to me, you know what, I've done too, too much wrong. I've, I've done too many bad things. Uh, there's no way God can save me. But it's plainly said that God can save anybody. It, God doesn't keep record. It, it doesn't matter what you have done wrong in your life. The hardest person to forgive often is the person that's needing to forgive themselves. You know, the moment that you ask God to forgive you, he forgave you, especially if you meant it from your heart. But it's strange that so many people will continue to, continue to beat themselves up about things that happen in their lives. I don't know many people that are proud of things that they did before Christ, before coming to Christ. I don't know many people are proud of the things. In fact, there's, there's so many people that don't want anyone to know the things that they've done before they came to Christ. Yeah, but we should be a witness in God about the things that he delivered us from. You don't, really, you don't have to shout it from the rooftop, but you can sit down with someone over coffee and let them know this is what God did in my life. This, this is what God delivered me from. Yeah, I, I tell my story sometime and people say there's no way. I often tell my story and people look at me and say, man, I can't, I can't see that. Why? Because God changed me. God, God cleaned me up. God, God made me brand new. And listen, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are in life. God can save you. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 16. It says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. See, there's a lot of people right now in this world that are saying they do, they do not believe. I pray for those people. I, I intercede for those people. They do not believe that there is a God. And there's, there's all type of debates, all type of debates of whether the Bible is true and, and whether God is real, whether Jesus Jesus Christ was, was Lord. Um, I'm, I'm encouraging you, don't get caught up in that. Stay in your word. Stay in your word or you'll be pulled, you'll be pulled to the left and to the right. Stay in your word. Amen. If you have loved ones that are, are thinking off course, that are saying those things, try and get them back into the word of God. The word of God is life. The word of God is food, or food to your soul, food to your spirit. It's, it's, it's life. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Luke chapter 7, verse 50, oh, verse 50. It says, And he said to the woman, Thy faith have saved thee, have saved thee. Go in peace. What saved her? It was her faith that saved her. You know, my years before Christ, my years when, when I wasn't living for the Lord, I always had faith. I always had faith that if I could make it to the church, God would save me. Now, the, no matter what people say about the church, uh, 
the church is a lifesaver. And, and for so many years, I was, I, was, I was out there and trying to find my way, trying to find my way, just like someone is listening this morning, maybe you're trying to find your way. But the scripture said, if you just have faith, you will be saved. Have faith in God. Have faith in Jesus Christ. You will be saved. No matter what others think about you, you know that your faith has saved you. Here's one that we all know is John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he what? He gave his only begotten son that whosoever, I'm a whosoever, so are you. Are you a whosoever? Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that we talk uh, on the subject of salvation, of, of entering into the kingdom uh, over the next couple of weeks, because summer is coming up. The harvest is great. Guess what? And we need to go fishing. There are people, there are lives in the balance. There, there are people that, that need to be saved. And guess what? You and I are commissioned to go and gather them, to go and get them. You know, if you, if you want to be a part of, of, of a ministry, of an organization that will, that will support you, that will provide resources to you so that you can go and be a witness, come see me, inbox me, write me. I want to help you get out there. You know, when I started, when I started witnessing for the Lord, I did not have any help. You know, I, I, I did not have any, any guidance. I did, I did not have a mentor. I did not have anyone that would, t that would sit down and tell me the ways to go. I had to learn everything on my own. But guess what? I was determined. I was determined to give back to the Lord. Let me say that again. I was determined to give back to the Lord. You see, I, I did not want to be just a person that only received from the Lord. There are so many people that we're good at receiving, but giving back. We, we need to be encouraged to give back. We need, we need some help to give back. If God has done anything in your life and you know that it was God, you should give back. You should tell everyone that you come in contact with what the Lord has done for you. Amen. Acts chapter 2. We're we're coming, we're coming to an end. We're coming to an end. I may not read every script, verse of scripture that I have this morning, but I really, I really hope that you're getting it. I really hope that you know that you know that you're saved. And if you know that you know that you're saved, I hope that you will share it with others, that you will get that all off of you and put it on some other people, that you will spread that joy uh, to other people. Are you hearing me this morning? Verse 21, it says, And it shall come to pass... That whosoever, that's that word again, are you a whosoever? I know I am. I'm a whosoever. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Man, when, by the time we get through this morning, you're going to know that you know that you're saved. Or you're, going to, or you're going to have to make a decision that you're going to repent and you're going to get back in the game. <clears throat> Are you hearing me this morning? Acts chapter 2, verse 47 it says, Praising God and having favor with all the people, it says, And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. That's why we don't worry so much about the church. Because the Lord adds to the church. The scripture says, The Lord added to the church daily. And there should always be an opportunity in the church for people to get saved, for people to enter into the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Jesus is that name. There is no other name but Jesus Christ where men may get saved. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. It says, for by grace you are saved through faith. 
I believe grace means that you don't deserve what you're going to get, but God is going to give it to you anyway. He's going to bless you anyway. For by grace, you are saved through faith. Through faith, we need to have faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If you want to give your father a gift this year, this Father's Day, if your father's unsaved and you want to give him a gift, give him the gift of salvation. Uh, I, years ago, I, I've been in so, I have so many stories, man, I got to tell you. Um, I really want to write a storybook. But <clears throat> I, I did a wedding one time. I performed a wedding one time, officiated a wedding. You get it. And the couple said to me, they said, uh, we want you to do an altar call at our wedding. I had never seen an altar call done at a wedding, but they requested it, and I, and I went before God. I said, Lord, these people are asking to do an altar call at a wedding. How are we going to do that? And so we, we went through the whole ceremony, and the husband and wife, they said, I do. They kissed. They turned around, and then I said to the, the, the congregation, the people that was there, it may have been, 150 people at this wedding, 200. I said, if you, maybe you don't have money to give to this couple today. Uh, maybe you don't have a gift to give to them today. And that's, that's okay. But they wanted to extend this opportunity for you to accept a gift from God, a gift that they're going to give to you from God. And that gift is that you would accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Do you know that 12 people stood up at a wedding and gave their life to Jesus Christ? Come on, say hallelujah. 12 people stood up at a wedding and gave their life to Jesus Christ. They received the gift of salvation. If you have a loved one, a friend, a neighbor that do not know Jesus Christ, do not be afraid to extend this gift to them. You never know. They're just waiting. Some, some people are just waiting for you to to extend that gift to them. They do not know how to get saved. They do not know how to, how to accept Jesus Christ. And that is where you come in. That is where I come in. We are a witness for God. For by grace you are saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of work, lest any should boast. 1 Corinthians 9, chapter 9, verse 22. This one right here, I have, I have stood on this verse of scripture for many years, and uh, it has really, it has really uh, helped me to be uh, what I need to be when God needed me to be it. It says, uh, to the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the for the gospel's sake, that I may be a partaker of it with you. You know, sometimes you just, you have to go and sit on a person's porch. Sometimes you have to go into another person's world in order to, in order to win them for God. Ah, oh, man, you know, this life has been so great to me. Uh, just, just going and sharing the gospel of one of the, one of the great memories I have in, in preaching the gospel, uh, me, and, me and Pastor Deanna, we were dating. We were, we were seeing each other, and um, by this time, we're engaged. And I received an invitation to come and preach uh, in some part of South Carolina that I've never heard of. I think it was called Meadows, South Carolina. Some part I've never heard of. And it was back road all the way to this, this, this small city. It took us three or four hours to get to this small town, all back road, went through Greenwood, Edgefield. Um, and it took us three or four hours to get there. And it was an outdoor service. And there were, there were, there was a lot of people there at this outdoor service. And they had this trailer, this, this, this flat bed uh, from a tractor trailer. And we were to go up on this flat bed and, and teach. And by the time we got up to teach, it was, it was nighttime. It was nighttime by the time we got up to teach. And we could not see anybody. 
But, but we tag team preached that night in the dark, and we came down off of that flatbed. There were people everywhere. We were laying hands on people. People were giving their life to Christ. People were getting saved. People were getting healed. People were getting delivered. I'm telling you, man, the gospel is fulfilling. I've, I've, I want to tell you so many stories that are true of things that God has done through me. God wants to do it through you. There are stories, there, there are people that God wants to reach through you that only you can reach. I've always thought about that, that there are people that only you can reach. There are people that I can reach that you can't reach. There are people that you can reach that I can't reach. They need, people need the Lord. People need salvation. People need to come through the door and enter the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 2, verse 20. Acts chapter 2, verse 20. And this is going to be the last verse. Acts chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. And then we're going to pray. It says, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you a whosoever? Is your loved one a whosoever? Is your neighbor, your co-worker? It says whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. One morning, I tell this story every chance I get. One morning I was out doing homeless ministry and I met a guy named Willie. Willie was drinking, Willie was drunk, Willie, Willie was angry. Willie was wanting to kill, actually say he wanted to kill his wife. And I found that out after we prayed with him. But I, I prayed with Willie that morning. Willie, again, Willie was angry, Willie was drunk, Willie was, he was mad. Willie wanted to fight. Willie was drunk. And I prayed with Willie that morning. I, say, I said, Willie, do you believe in God? And he nodded his head yes. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? He nodded his head yes. Do you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? He nodded his head yes. And so I said, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, I want you to pray this prayer with me. And, and we went through the prayer. Well, Willie accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. What do you think happened next? God saved Willie right there on the spot. But then something happened that I'd never seen before. God sobered Willie up. Willie was drunk. He sobered him up right there on the spot. And I said, Willie, would you like to be filled with the Holy Ghost? And he didn't know what the Holy Ghost was, but he, guess what he did? He nodded his head, yes. And God filled him with the Holy Ghost. You see, when you witness, when you share the gospel, when you share Jesus Christ with a person, it is not, it is not you, the scripture says, lest men should boast. It is, it is God who has to perform God will perform his word. We're, we're just the mailman. I'm just the mailman. I deliver the mail. And guess what? People have a, they have a choice. They have a choice to receive the mail or to reject the mail. You don't have to worry about the rejection. Your job and my job is to deliver Jesus Christ as the mail. And the rest is up to God. Are you hearing me this morning? Well, let's end in prayer this morning. Amen. Let me say a prayer for you. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you for this time we've had this morning talking on the subject of salvation, talking about worth. Lord, you thought I was worth saving. You thought the people that are living this, that are watching this morning were worth saving. And there are people that may watch this morning that do not know you, that do, that need to accept you as the Lord and Savior. But first, Lord, I want to pray for the people that are watching that are saved, that, that are citizens of your kingdom. 
Lord, that we will continue to spread the gospel. Lord, that we will get out of our comfort zones and that we will open up our mouths and let you speak through us. Lord, may we be a witness for you in this last hour. May we tell everyone that we come in contact with about a Savior, a Lord and a Savior named Jesus Christ. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. I want you to stir us up, Lord. Stir up the hunger. Stir up, stir up, Lord. Bring the fire, Lord. May there be a burning fire that will come through your people. No longer, Lord, no longer will we set idle, Lord. That we will set idle, Lord, and, and think about quitting and thinking about giving up and, 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 and laying our worries, Lord. May we get back in our position. May we get back in our place, Lord, of, of, of telling everyone that we come in contact about a Savior who could save anyone. I pray that for the, those that are listening this morning that we will begin to, we begin to get back into our words that we would, as when the doors of the church open, that we will run through those doors, Lord, to be equipped. I thank you in Jesus' name, Lord, that, that the word of God was heard this morning. Now to the person that is watching this morning that need to accept you as their savior. If you're that person this morning and you're watching, or, or maybe a few of you, you're watching this morning, and you haven't made the decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want you to pray with me this prayer. If you're that person that maybe you're in a backsliding position and, and you've strayed away, you've, you've gotten away from God and you need to come home this morning, I want you to pray this prayer as well. Repeat these words after me this morning. Dear Lord, I am your child. You are my God. I believe Jesus Christ, he is your son, and he died for me. And on the third day, he was raised. This morning, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins as I forgive all that have sinned against me. Thank you for saving me this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I thank you for the time this morning that we have spent together. I look forward to seeing you soon. Um, I want you to continue to watch the TEC News uh, on Facebook. Go to the TEC News page. If you are not connected to us through the TEC News or any other social media, find us on social media, TEC News, where you will find out everything that we're doing, uh, every upcoming event. You'll find out when we'll be back into the house of God. There's so much information that we put on there that you need to know. Let's stay connected, amen? Let's stay together. So the last thing I'll say to you is go be great. See you uh, Wednesday night, amen, at Bible study. God bless.